Hello everybody, you're watching M4 TV and welcome to The Icon, where we bring to you stories of inspiration from across the world. I'm reminded of this very famous quote by Paulo Coelho, uh, remember where, that wherever your heart is, there you will find your treasure. Today's guest is who inspires me to think about this quote. Born in Denmark, um, being raised in various parts of Europe, she followed her dream, her passion, and found her calling in Ayurveda. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me the pleasure to introduce Karina Tillerson on The Icon. Namaste, Karina. Namaste. It's an honor to have you on the icon. <laughs> honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Karina, so I understand that you were raised in Denmark. Yes. Various parts of Europe. And those were the times when um, Ayurveda probably hadn't, you know, gotten across the world. When did no. you start this um, liking or you know, when did you understand about Ayurveda and what, what made you understand that this is your calling? Um, I, I had known about Ayurveda for, for some years, for uh, perhaps 10 years before or 15 years before um, I decided to start studying it. Um, I didn't know how vast um, the science of Ayurveda really was. I, I knew about the treatments, the oil treatments and the massages and so on. Um, so I guess my first initial uh, awakening to Ayurveda was when I actually had an Ayurvedic massage um, myself. And that was like a, a wow experience, like the best massage that I had ever had in my life. And, uh, and not just because it made me feel amazing, but it really felt like it connected me with some some force or something deeper and, and bigger that uh, I was curious about. And then it took some years more before I before I started studying Ayurveda. Um, and it was more, uh, I started studying uh, natural medicine, like naturopathy. Mm -hmm. uh, but soon I've, I've realized so this was in australia i lived in australia at this time no longer in europe mm -hmm. uh, i realized that naturopathy was just not deep enough and not spiritual enough for for me so i i was looking for something more holistic and um ayurveda was also taught at this uh, college where i was studying so i i took ayurveda as an elective to start mm -hmm. with and then I realized that, oh, this, I, I felt at home pretty immediate, immediately uh, with the teacher, our beautiful teacher, Rupa, Dr. Rupa Rao. Um, she was certainly part of why I decided then to study Ayurveda because um, she was an inspiration. And, um, and then just the therapy itself felt, felt right. It, it felt like the right thing for me to study. What I found interesting about you and uh, Chandana Ayurveda is that you, you have a combination of uh, therapies, you know, to um, uh, holistically help someone. So it also includes a lot of um, uh, therapies based on energies, energy levels. Um, there's a lot of skepticism around, you know, uh, treatments that use energy. Uh, well, there is a you know, huge um, section which still argues that, you know, there's, uh, well, it's, it's, it's discarded. But those who understand the concept of energy understands how deep and how intense it is. Uh, tell us more about, you know, how, you know, your reciprocation or, you know, how people have, you know, reciprocated to all those therapies that you have at Chandana Ayurveda. And tell us a little bit more about the uh, energy therapies. Well, uh, we are all energy. So everything really is just energy. That's, it's a scientific fact. Um, and when, when you understand this, then you also understand that the energetic, um, energetic therapies are going, are going to be essential when you want to achieve healing. Um, 
So for me personally, I, I have um, studied with an energy master for many, many years and uh, have always been aware of this space. Um, in terms of using it in my clinic, I have various different ways where I use the energy herbs, actually create an energetic um, healing as well. It's, it's not just about the energy that comes in other ways, but it, herbs themselves in themselves have an energetic field and, and you know, because it's a plant. Um, and their actions also create certain energies in the body and in the mind. Um, but the way I, I, another way I use energy is by energy healing. Uh, in, for example, massages, I would use energies. But I also use, um, I do mama puncture. Mama, mama puncture is needling and you access the nadis in the body. Is mama puncture uh, similar to acupuncture? Very similar, but mm -hmm. slightly different. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's based on the Ayurvedic system. Mamas, mamas mm -hmm. are placed all over our body. So chakras, our chakras are part of our mamas, mm -hmm. uh, but there's many other mama points. For, uh, and if you want to kind of know where you have your mama points, think of joints. The major mama points are in the joints, so knees, it's called Yanu, for example, or um, you've got your elbows and you've got your wrists and, um, for example, inside, right in the center of your palm is the um, uh, Talahidria Mama, which is the small heart. Um, and so it connects to the heart, which the heart chakra in the, in the chest. So, but there's many, many, many uh, you know, mamas in the body, and and we use them with um, with needling in mama puncture. We can needle uh, the, the mamas, the the smaller mamas, and and by that we can access the nadis. And if there's blockages in the channels along the way in the channels of of the nadis, then we can release the energy, and so the the energy can flow again in the body. And that is that heals. Uh, if your energy flows, then then you achieve healing. Beautiful. You also com combine hypnotherapy along with Ayurvedic practices. Yes, I use many different things. I also use um, because I used to study as I used to be an astrologer many years ago when I was in my twenties, and I also used to use tarot cards. So I use all different kinds of therapies, not necessarily all the time. Mm -hmm. It's when it's necessary. Um, so hypnotherapy is a way to to access the unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So if, um, say, a person I'm working with is really struggling with um, some past trauma conditioning, or it can be that there's um, addictions or anything really that they can't really come, get out of um, some patterns, some behavioral patterns or thought patterns that they, that they might be stuck in. It can be sometimes uh, anxiety, it can be all sorts of different issues. Then hypnotherapy can help because you can access, with hypnotherapy, you're accessing directly the unconscious mind. And guess what? It's the unconscious mind that run the show. It's not your conscious mind. Your unconscious mind is like, that's what rules you. Yeah, and I guess all the problems that you have in your body is a part of, you know, what, what your unconscious mind is feeding into your body. Exactly, exactly. Mm. So in that way, hypnotherapy comes in as just another tool to to achieve healing, so you uh, you can change some old patterning of way of thinking, um, negative thought patterns, which is very very common, you know, like constant negativity, uh, which we don't even know exactly where it's coming from. It's just you know, it just circles around and can't get out of mind. That is a very common problem, and with uh, hypnotherapy, I can help people get out of these patterns. That is so interesting because, see, modern medicine recognizes the fact that, you know, there is a lot of uh, psychological
psychosomatic diseases that are prevalent due to lifestyle uh, disorders or you know the way we live life these days so yes it is an identified fact that you know uh, it's called the mind you know what mind playing the game and unfortunately uh, mainstream medicine treats only the body and not necessarily eliminate the problem from the mind so i think this kind of a natural cure is actually aiming at curing a person from within uh, not just yeah. within the body but from within the mind yes and and in the old scriptures of ayurveda uh, it actually is written that it says literally all disease starts in the mind all disease starts in the mind and when you really contemplate that sentence that is really quite profound isn't it um so you can never get around using uh, you know working to some extent with with the mind or emotions um so it's very it's very powerful when you when you start employing a very holistic approach to healing not just using um th- thinking of the body as a physical entity you you thinking of it as an energetic entity and and how does your thought patterns then affect your in your energy for example um you're opening up a whole another way of thinking and you're opening up a whole another way of healing as well which is really amazing so my mission or my job as i see it is to help people understand all of these aspects and yes the body is very important we need to keep the temple clean healthy strong so that's where yoga can come into the picture yoga and ayurveda are really sister therapies uh, yoga comes into the picture and um, we can use pranayama which directly accesses all the energy channels as well which is very powerful i often give people breathing exercises meditation is incredibly important as well because it focuses the mind and it it starts raising awareness are you and an active practitioner of yoga as well yes lovely yes. yeah and meditation and i um, and we have meditation we run meditation uh, groups and classes here at in chandana yoga as well um and mantra is another thing that can be very oh, that's what i wanted to come you know come to you in a moment here yeah. but uh when you said that you know you you practicing ayurveda and yoga actively uh you did mention that you know you treat uh, the mind using um you know meditative techniques uh, there is pranayama that you do uh, for uh, breath enhancement uh we understand that you know yoga sees the body as different sheets of existence and uh, in these different sheets of existence the uh, the physical body that one sees is often referred to as the anamaya kosha and uh, the the other sheets or the other layers of existence include manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha and anandamaya kosha which is the extreme highest level uh, you've mentioned about treatments for the manomaya kosha which is mind treatment what do you do for the higher sheets like you know how do you you know reach upon those parts well that is really where the energetic healing comes into the picture but more than that it's really when you when you start using meditation so when you teach um, people to meditate they will then the healing will happen slowly gradually going in the right direction and mantra also is very useful for this of mm-hmm. course um so it's multifaceted and one thing i am also very big on is teaching people to connect to earth earth is our healer it's a healer and and it's very simple we all live on planet earth so walking every day barefoot on the ground or lying down on the ground which a lot of us forget to do is a heal it's a healing technique uh, and it's really reconnecting back to mother nature reconnecting back to mother nature and uh, and the earth energy so we receive our energy from earth and if when you when you start doing it and you do it regularly you can really feel the strength that you can that you can pull from from earth energy and yes we receive energy from from elsewhere as well uh, but earth energy is it's really important and that's one thing i'm very big on especially for women i predominantly work with women and 
help women healing um, you know when when they are exhausted or when they have burnout to most women yes <laughs> women yeah Yeah I guess we uh, we we take up too many roles and then you know uh get overstressed with many of them and uh think that we can't handle it all. Uh tell us a little bit more about you know how you work with women and you know how you help them. Um well usually I'll of course we start with a consult the initial consultation to identify where where the problem is where the where women are uh, situated you know are they actually in full burnout which is we can also call that adrenal fatigue this can often happen after um, women have had uh, children like mm-hmm. not usually immediately immediately we have all the good hormones that that keep us uh, well for a while and breastfeed or some women breastfeed and so on mm-hmm. uh, release is nice hormones but once we are past that initial stage so usually when the the babies or the baby or you know it's uh, sometimes this happens after the first baby or it happens after three or four babies that people mm-hmm. suddenly relapse and have a burnout mm-hmm. yeah exactly um um where was my thought to train so when the child is 3 years or 2 years there's a depletion in in the woman's system usually and then we need to identify where exactly is there perhaps there's iron deficiency there's there's physical things that we can work on um sometimes uh, mm-hmm. you know nutrient deficiencies um mineral usually it's mineral deficiencies more than anything um so that is certainly baseline where we work we start there and then go up through all the different you know emotional um other physical kind of issues and then i help them with herbs usually often mm-hmm. or medicines or ayurvedic treatments and treatments so the ayurvedic treatments uh, like the the massage and steam treatment the kadibasti the shirodara the all of these treatments are amazing for nurturing and nourishing and that's really what women need at this time they need nourishing and they need nurturing themselves so they need to they're not going to necessarily find someone in their immediate environment that are going to do this for them because the children need them they might have a husband that needs them because he's working and so on so they need to do it themselves and of course they can come they can, they then come to me for treatments or wherever they live in the world they they I recommend they have I really treatments uh, which are very helpful it really takes that initial kind of it takes them from being initially extremely fatigued to that next level where they can see a light um, and slowly start nourishing themselves So there's lots of self treatments that you can do in Ayurveda and I teach them all of this. And one key factor is also the lymphatic system which we don't necessarily pay so much attention to in the in in western medicine certainly not but Ayurveda recognizes the lymphatic lymphatic system as a very important factor and and so do I you know it's it's we I really work with get people to access and to um, activate their lymphatic system in different ways for example one way to uh, to train your lymphatic system is by dry brushing another way is by uh, making yourself sweat so you you have to put extra clothes on drink a hot cup of tea go for a brisk walk so you train your body to sweat which is very important because they, you need to explain toxins from the lymphatic system as well. So That's all of these uh, mm. Yes, it's very interesting and there's many many little tricks and tra- you know things that we do to to enhance the functioning of our our body and once the lymphatic system works then you suddenly find that your mind also works better. It's all connected and the liver works better. everything starts functioning a bit better they all fall into place uh, well uh, karina this is something that I've always you know I had my attention um on you know it's always made me think um 
we understand that Australia is moving towards atheism, so people don't believe in the concept of God anymore. But um, you can never say spirituality is has to do anything with religion. Uh, it's completely different. You mentioned about mantras, the use of mantras. Mantras can just be sounds or syllables uh, that create positive vibrations. Sometimes mantras can be prayers, uh, which are in lots of sentences. Um, has it has it been easy to teach mantras to your clients and your patients? Um, yeah, I mean, some, some of my clients are already on the path of yoga and um, are quite you know, familiar with the natural healing and so on. And so, yeah, that's that would be the clients I would say, you know, I would more employ the use of mantras. If people are coming straight from a very Australian, as you mentioned, Australian background or, you know, conventional background, I, w I would start somewhere else first. I wouldn't go there. Then I might try with hypnotherapy. If I want to work with the mind, mm -hmm. I would work with hypnotherapy because most people have heard of, of right. the hypnotherapy and how it can help them. So it just I, I gauge where people are at and then slowly we open the, the treasure box and pull out what is uh, what can be used for the particular person at the particular time. Um, it just depends. You know, sometimes when people come in, I, I do a tarot reading. I would not certainly do that for everyone. But if I feel in that moment uh, that this is what this person needs and and they are open to it, then, then I would suggest that. Or I would do a meditation with them, a particular meditation. You know, I've got many different particular meditations uh, which also work on you know shifting for example past trauma in the body um, which is stuck it can be stuck you know in your, in your system and so I give them meditations to do and I'll sit and I'll do it with them for the first one or sometimes I'll teach it online if they don't live in the same um, city as I do so it's like the way I work is really quite fluid like that you know it's not um, but I work or where I, I start with where people are at, so I wouldn't give mantra to someone who has never heard of it or who doesn't understand mm. in any way. Doesn't it's not open to it. I would wait until one day they're ready. Mm. Beautiful, because they say that mantra has to be taught like a secret, and it it has it shouldn't be shared between other people. You know, it's just a, you know a teacher to the. Um, student and yes um, it's, it's interesting how you you know try and incorporate mantra you know in your system of uh, healing now uh, we all know that 2020 has been a very difficult year for the entire world what would yeah. you know your quick um, self-healing or self-help tip for our audience on m4tv would be self-healing tip <laughs> well <laughs> um, Okay, so what I have done through through this year, I have offered, so that's a self-healing, but it's part of a group. So I'm offering, and I still am actually offering, um, uh, detox groups online. So the mm -hmm. detox, are very gentle detoxes and very um, simple, but it just takes people out of, um, if they are not, you know, wherever they are at and, and gets them to let go of, non-ideal foods, non-ideal drinks like coffee, alcohol, sugars and all this and brings them back to a basic basic good diet for 10 days. Hmm. And that really helped, it has helped so many people. I've got so, you know, tons of <laughs> testimonials of people who have been through it. And now because we started this in, the, I do it together with a yoga teacher, my friend. And um, so we have videos in the group and we have um, videos, yoga videos and pranayama videos and we have cooking videos and there's recipes and so on. That's all this stuff and then people and we check in every day so it gives people a focus as well. So that was my, I sort of thought when clinic was closed, nobody could come. It's like, oh, how, how now can I help people, which is really what you know, I'm all about. I want to 
be able to share what I what I can um, to help. So this is what this is the, the idea I came up with. Well, let's do it online. Let's do some online detoxes and get people together in groups, and you know, so you don't sit at home and get anxious. And right. Um, yeah, there's there's lots of that online, of course, and other people have done similar and that. But this this has been my. Uh, my contribution really so in self, in terms of self-help um, do it if, if you can manage if any if, if you can manage to set this up for yourself you know make yourself a detox program detox your mind from social media from your phone put your phone away you know maybe just once a day you check in and so on um, so and then abstinence Hmm. Well, just have a simple life, have a simple diet, go back to simplicity. That That is kind of, we have an opportunity to do this at this time because we're not, you know, the people who are still in lockdown, uh, there are still people in, in the world that don't go out or certainly don't go out as much. So go back to simplicity and do yoga, meditation and eat simple foods, um, clean up the diet really focus on the health focus on your health and thank you uh, so much uh, i think that's that's a wonderful tip and you know i think everyone uh, could definitely make use of that one it's not it's not very difficult to follow provided you have the heart to do it um, thank you so much Karina, for joining us on the icon and uh, just like the mighty um, sandalwood tree grows big and spreads its fragrance contributes in every way to wellness and um, goodness all around. Uh, I wish Chandan, um, Chandana Ayurveda all the very best and um, it was great having you on the icon. Thank you once again. Thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> Our pleasure. <laughs> we'll meet you soon. <laughs> okay.